Getting control of spending is probably one of the key foundations that, that everyone has to master if they're going to have good financial well-being. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you earn. If you always spend everything you've got coming in or more, then you're never going to get ahead, you're never going to build resilience and you're never going to have choices. Well, the first step to getting control of your spending is to work out where it all goes and stop putting your head in the sand. It's not fun. It isn't something that we all got a spring in our step doing because we like spending, don't we? But if you just sat down and looked at your bank statements or looked at an app or worked out on a spreadsheet where the money goes, that's the first stage to first of all work out Am I spending on things that are helping me have a good relationship with money and good financial well-being? Failing to control spending is probably one of the single biggest problems that most people have that affects their financial well-being negatively. And the opposite of that is getting control and, and, uh, and having exercising proper will over what you are spending your money on. Now this is not always about going without, but it may be making some subtle changes once you know where it's all going. And most people are in denial about where their money actually uh, is going. And they often think they can't save or they haven't got enough money to put money aside or enough money to build up a reserve. And it's because they're just not exercising free or a bit like someone who's eating everything at the buffet uh, every day and not even thinking it's going to affect their waistline or their health. Give an example of how you can control uh, urges and impulses. I am a, I'm an absolute avid reader. I read two books a week and I'm always buying stuff off of Amazon. And they used to send me things saying, you bought this so you probably want this. And I used to say yes and one click. But now what I do, and I have the urge to buy that book, I just click it and put it on my wish list. So I'm still sort of showing interest, but I'm not buying. And so what I then do at the end of the month, I look at what's on my wish list and I can only choose four books. Now that way, I'm still indulging my passion of reading, but I'm not, I'm not actually being dictated to by someone else who's trying to sell a product or service and get me when I'm low or when I'm uh, highly engaged with a product. One of the ways that you can get control of your spending is to understand that you are going to have impulses and you are going to have urges. And just accept it. We're human. We're not machines. We don't do everything in a rational, uh, an irrational way. And that's because we've got two sides of our personality. And we've got the doer who's myopic and wants to spend today. And we've got the planner who's rational. And the, the thing is, we're having this tussle all the time. And one of the simplest ways is next time you get the urge to spend some money, whether it's online or in a shop, say to yourself, I'm just going to say no for the moment. Now, my view on credit cards is mixed. I think they're a great thing when it comes to buying big purchases online where you want some credit protection or you're concerned about the purchaser. But I think you have to earn the right to use a credit card responsibly. And so for anyone under the age of 35, I would say to you, try and avoid using credit cards unless you absolutely have to use them, for instance, on an online purchase or something where you're concerned about um, security. But keep the limit very low. And the reason for that is that credit cards encourage you to get yourself into debt, bad debt. And they encourage you to buy things that you wouldn't normally be able to buy. And then you end up spending the rest of your life always paying enormous amounts of interest and never being able to save for your future or for your emergency fund. Yet you absolutely must avoid overdrafts, and store cards. They are, they are what I call card cancer. They're awful. They're absolutely not designed to help your financial well-being. If you can't afford it, I'm very sorry, but you shouldn't have it. A little bit of denial sometimes might mean, well, actually, can you afford your job? And if at the end of the day, every month, you haven't got enough money to buy the extras that you want, then perhaps you need to invest in yourself and if, for instance, you were going to go and get a loan to help you get a better qualification or more skills to earn more money, that might be acceptable. But to use credit uh, to buy things that you really haven't got the money for, that you don't really need, is a recipe for disaster. Final. The way that I think you use a credit card responsibly is only ever use it to buy stuff that you've got the money in your account to pay for otherwise. 
And so therefore, when the bill comes around the next month, you've got the money to pay it back. And don't get lulled into thinking that zero balance transfers or purchases are a good thing, because eventually you either have to pay a fee for arranging those, or you'll end up paying interest when it comes to the end of the period.